Welcome to 5 Minutes in the Word, a daily devotional in the Word of God. Today on 5 Minutes in the Word, I want to turn our attention to Daniel chapter 6, and I want us to see the faith that Daniel had during trying times. Daniel chapter 6, starting in verse 1, says, It pleased Darius to set over the kingdom 120 satraps to be over the whole kingdom, and over these three governors, of whom Daniel was one, that the satraps might give account to them so that the king would suffer no loss. And so, as is common uh, in the book of Daniel, as we've gone back to previous chapters, we're going to see that Daniel uh, has been pleasing before the king. And obviously, so pleasing, in fact, that he has made to be one of the governors uh, over the land. And so, we're going to see that Daniel has risen to a, a very high and prominent position uh, there uh, amongst others, but not everybody is going to like this. It says, then, uh, then this Daniel distinguished himself above the, the governors and satraps because an excellent spirit was in him and the, key, the king gave thought to setting him over the whole realm. And so here you're going to see that not only was Daniel well favored, but actually he was well favored above everybody else. And the king even thought about setting him over the whole realm. Now, obviously, this is a blessing here from God. And so we're going to, once, once again, we're, remember, not everybody is going to like what has happening here for Daniel. So the governors and satraps sought to find some charge against Daniel concerning the kingdom, but they could find no charge or fault because he was faithful, nor was there any error or fault found in him. Then these men said, we shall not find any charge against this Daniel unless we find it against him concerning the law of his God. Now, wow, that is a pretty amazing statement there. First, they're saying oh, we can't find any charge against him because they're thinking about the charges based on their current laws, based on their current system of, of governing. Uh, and so based on their laws, they're not finding anything against Daniel, but they know something that Daniel has put higher than everything else. And that is God. That Daniel, he positions God in the first, in the best place in his life. And these men know it. It's something that is known by, uh, far and wide. And they know that unless it is, you know, something concerning the law of his God, they're not going to find something against uh, Daniel. So these governors and satraps uh, thronged before the king and said thus to him, King Darius, live forever. So, you know, they're really starting to kind of kind of put it on a little bit uh, for uh, the king. And it says, all the governors of the kingdom, the administrators and satraps, the counselors and advisors have consulted together to establish a royal statute and to make a firm decree that whoever petitions any God or man for 30 days, except you, O king, shall be cast into the den of lions. Now, O king, establish the decree and sign the writing so that it cannot be changed according to the law of the Medes and the Persians, which does not alter. And so here they think they have come up with a brilliant plan. They're going to have a law signed by the king uh, that says you can't worship any other god for 30 days um, and uh, unless you're worshiping the king himself. And this is something that according to the laws of the Medes and Persians, once it's signed into law, it is truly uh, the law. And it says, therefore, King Darius signed the written decree. Now, when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, he went home and in his upper room uh, with his windows open towards Jerusalem, he knelt down on his knees three times that day and prayed and gave thanks before his God, as was his custom since early days. Then these men assembled and found Daniel praying and making supplication before his God. And so here the king, he signs the decree and Daniel hears about this. And Daniel does probably the most important thing that he could have done at this moment. You know, he, he turns to God. He, he goes back home. He opens his window towards Jerusalem. And just like he always does, as the text says, as was his custom, he's going to pray three times that day. And he's going to pray in a way that he always has. And obviously it's in a way that can be seen by others and possibly even heard by others. And so the men are going to assemble. Uh, they're, going to, they're going to find Daniel praying and making supplication before God. And so that's when they're going to bring this accusation before the king. And they, and they went before the king and spoke concerning the king's decree. Have you not signed a decree that every man who petitions any god or man within 30 days except you, O king, shall be cast into the den of lions? The king answered and said that this thing is true according to the law of the Medes and Persians, which does not alter. So they answered and said before the king, that Daniel, who is one of the captives from Judah, does not show uh, due regard for you, O king, or for the decree that you have signed, but makes his petition three times a day. So obviously they were 
paying close attention because they noticed every time that he prayed. Uh, and the king, when he heard these words, was greatly displeased with himself and set his heart on Daniel to deliver him. And he labored till the going down of the sun to deliver him. Then these men approached the king and said to the king, uh, know, know, O king, that it is the law of the Medes and Persians that no decree or statute which the king establishes may be changed. So the king gave command, and they brought Daniel and cast him to the den of lions. But the king spoke, to, uh, saying to Daniel, Your God, whom you serve continually, he will deliver you. Then a stone was brought and laid on the mouth of the den, and the king sealed it uh, with his own signet ring and with the signets of his lords, that the purpose concerning Daniel might not be changed. And so here we're going to see Daniel is going to be cast into uh, the den of lions. Now, just for time's sake today, I want us to understand this. As you continue going down through this chapter, what, what do we find? Well, we find that these lions, that they do not gobble uh, you know, Daniel up in the, in the night, they do not consume him. In fact, by the, by the grace and mercy of God and, and God working here, Daniel is preserved. Daniel is saved. He is saved from what would it have normally been, you know, immediate, uh, you know, just, uh, you know, death. But here he is saved and those accusers of his are going to face a, a, a judgment that they were not prepared for. But notice this. Notice that through this text today, what we have seen is that Daniel, that he was someone of, of great, uh, you know, godly uh, integrity. He had an integrity that, that uh, was, you know, unshaken. Uh, and when people looked to bring charges against him, they knew that it had to be something, you know, that he was doing in his religion because uh, that, that was the only thing they could really bring against him. Daniel was a man of faith and lived it out every single day. And I have to ask the question about myself, and you can ask it about yourself. Are we living a life like that, that people know that, hey, this person is going to serve God no matter what? And then when times get tough, like they did for Daniel, you know, you know, a law was passed that, that said that he couldn't worship any other God. He couldn't worship the God of heaven. You know what he did? He turned and he did exactly what he always had done. He went and he prayed three times, as was his custom. And he did that no matter the consequences, that he continued to be faithful to God. Would we do that? Is that the way we would respond to a problem like that? And then he's cast into the den of lions, and there he is, and he, he's there, you know, and for the taking, uh, you know, and, and some circumstances you would say, well, hey, you know, he's doomed. But yet God provided, and God was able to work uh, there and to, to do something that, you know, couldn't be done by just uh, a mere mortal man. Here we're going to see the faith of Daniel <clears throat> and how it helped him. Uh, throughout life, helped him to rise uh, into a, a great stature uh, there amongst the people, but helped him demonstrate his faith day by day to represent the Almighty God. And that's what we do each and every day. In our lives, the way we live, it represents our God. And so what's our life saying today? Is it saying that we're following after Jesus, or is it saying we're going in the ways of the world? Let us all choose to be like Daniel and have a faith that no matter the circumstances, a faith that will endure.